Hello guys, in this video I will show you how to fine-tune your models in Azure AI Foundry and then use the same models in Copilot Studio by using the AI prompts provided by AI Builder. So what you see here now is the model catalog, AI Foundry of course, model catalog, and I'm in my project mod multi-agent SK. So in this model catalog, I can see that we have 11 thousand hundred something 151 models and i see a lot of different models here the model that i want to fine tune today is uh, gpt 4.0 but if you want to fine tune your own models for other tasks you can just uh, search in the tasks here it can be multi-model classification image classifications text classifications but we don't need all of that we will just search for 4.0 and get the chat completion model so looking into this model, I will get some details about the model and I will see some different aspects of the model. This means that I will see the last time it was trained, the cutoff date, I can see the pricing. And also I can see the benchmark of this model compared to other models and how it actually performs with, for example, regards to latency. As you can see here, it's uh, quite higher, quite high compared to Llama and you can see the throughputs and the estimated cost. So let's go back to fine tuning. I can also see the existing deployments, which are my already deployed models. This is one model that I've used in my multi-agent search uh, project. And then I can fine tune the model. So what I would do when I fine tune this model, I will just choose the model. I will uh, press fine tune. Once I press fine tune, I will uh, have to choose the connected AI resource. So this uh, is just a drop down, and if you have a couple of resources, you can choose them. But in this uh, one here, I have only one resource. There are three different methods of doing this in the Azure AI Foundry, but I will choose the supervised supervised uh, method because I already have data that I will be using as training data. They're labeled with the system prompts, system message prompts, the query and the answers that I expected. So I will add training data and this training data is actually data which uh, I will share with you. So this data is, um, the, 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 this is a data set where we have uh, some examples you, where we have the message role and system. We have three three different types of messages. So we have the role, which is the system message system role here. Then we have the content of the role uh, message. And then from there, we have the user role with the content where we ask the question, what is a must see in Paris? And then we have the role assistant, which is the expected answer. So what we are actually doing when, when we fine tune this model is that we Actually, after the pre-training is done, we train it with more data to make it more. It's like taking a robot that does everything. Let's say it cleans your house, it makes you coffee, it makes you, it cleans your clothes, your laundry, everything, and just making it into a coffee agent. So you teach it how to, you make it a specialist in coffee making. So you want it to be better at coffee making. So you give it all the tips and tricks like, uh, using the scoop and just not putting coffee right into the filter, if it's filter coffee. So this is kind of making it more task specific while we are fine tuning it. There's a couple of ways to do that, which we can cover in a later video. But fine tuning is that we have this data set here, which we will give to the model and the model will, le will learn from this data set. So this is a JSON line fil file. So let's go to add training data and I will upload a file. Once I've uploaded this file, it will of course take some minutes before the file actually gets in place. So this is the training data set. And this training data set is for an agent that will help users navigate uh, how to travel, uh, navigate traveling. So it will not help them in booking, booking tickets and everything, but it will give them very structured way of uh, how to travel, for example, to Paris with regards to some aspects that we have added in the data, in the post-training data. So if you need a validation data set, you can also add it, and this will be used to validate if the training was actually 
where the, if the training was good there, uh, or it, it did what it was supposed to do. So fine tune, and we call it for a travel agent. Fine tuned travel agents. The seed, we will leave, let this be random today. We don't have to dive a lot in, deeper into this, but it's good to know how much, how much, uh, what the batch size could be, the landing multiplier, and the number of epochs. So this we can cover. The hyperparameters is something we will cover in another session, but for today we will just keep it default and a random seed. Once this is submitted, then the model will be submitted for fine tuning, and you will find it here. And when you will find it in the generative AI fine tuning in this section. So I have already fine tuned the model, and this is the model that we will be using in Copilot Studio. So let's check out this model. This model is uh, exactly the same model that I just showed. That I just showed you. I just trained it up on some. Uh, basic travel questions and uh, the way I want the agent to respond and act. So it's completed the status and you can see that uh, it is uh, supervised learning. It used 50 minutes to train this. The number of epochs means how <laughs> number of epochs, the steps and the, the batch size was one and the learning multi multiplier uh, rate multiplier was one. So <laughs> looking into this, I can use this model. I can look at the metrics. For example, here you can see that the loss function, which is the which is the difference from so loss is the difference from how wrong the model is actually. So if you think about it, like how far off the the, the expected answer the model was. So in the beginning, the expect the loss was quite was high, two point something. After the fifty hundred steps, we got down to one point something, and this is really good. Token, uh, token ac accurate accuracy. This is uh, how accurate the predicted tokens are compared to what uh, they should be. So here we have 0 0.4, and as you can see, it just rose as we trained in the different steps. And this is a good, this is a good sign. The fact that uh, we get the losses to go down, the uh, loss down, and the token accuracy goes up. So good sign means that the learning worked and then you have the checkpoints for the model and these are the different steps and everything so if i want to use the model i can use it from here and you can see the deployment name so now i'm ready to deploy the model so i will just check that everything is correct so this is the deployment deployment name it's a standard deployment, and I will just use the connected resource. Just took 100k tokens. Could have taken more, but just uh, this is just a test round. So we use the default filter and deploy the model. So let's move over to Copilot Studio. In Copilot Studio, I've created a travel agent, of course. As you can see here, the description, you can see the general instructions. Copilot Studio, the general instructions are actually what the agent is supposed to do, how they are supposed to act, and uh, if there is any tools involved, involved, uh, involved, this could be an MCP server, this could be Power Automate uh, flows. You have to actually, you have to actually initialize them here and tell them what to do inside here. And then you can use orchestration. So there is two types of orchestration. You have classic orchestration and generative orchestration. In generative orchestration. The AI, the large language model, actually decides how to how to best respond to users, and this is quite beneficial when you actually want um, to use the benefits of the LLM making these cho the choices. With um, looking at the classic classic uh, orchestration, this is where the the structure is kind of more put by you. So you use the topics and use trigger phrases, and when it comes to topics. Now, since we have a generative orchestration, the agent will choose which topic to actually use when the user asks a question. In that context, I've created a topic called Travel AI Prompt. In this Travel AI Prompt, this is a quick description. Make sure you describe your topics very well when you're running orchestrated, uh, when you're using generative orchestration, and you use a prompt. So the prompt is where we actually call the model. So looking into this prompt, you will see that 
Yeah, so once we are in this um, AI prompt, you can see that there is a, there's a GPT-4 all model here. This was the model that I, that I used. This is the basic model. GPT-4 all mini is the basic one. GPT-4 all is the standard one. And we have the premium all one paid preview. So let's, let's look at the AI Foundry model. So to add a new model, we actually have to add a new model here and get the model deployment name, the base model name, endpoints, API key, and describe this model. This is optional, but I would recommend you to do it. So let's jump back to Azure AI Foundry and get the information. So to get my to get my endpoints and my um, API key, I just get go navigate to models and get my endpoints and get it back to Copilot Studio. And this is my Azure model endpoint, and I need to get an API key too, which was already here. And let's get the API key. This is the API key and the model name. This is also inside here, close. So we have the model name here. This is GPT for Ultra Who, let's see. And base name model is, let's do this. So now, connect this model and see what happens. Let's say this. As you can see, I'm connected to my model, so I just close this down. You can also test it from here. This is a user query input, so I have give me travel to tips to Paris and just test this. You can see the test results will, will appear here. So my model now is running in. We are using my fine-tuned model, the Azure AI Foundry. But as you remember in the benchmark, there was a high level of uh, latency. That's why it took some time here. So this is good, save. And let's go to my agent and ask a question about travel. So once in Copilot Studio, I will just uh, ask the same question. And as you will see, the session gets started. So I can also track between topics. Once I have this on, I see that the agent actually chooses to travel, travel AI from the topic and I get an answer. So it also asks me engaged questions. What are you most excited to do in Paris? This is something I set up uh, the agent to do. Please go into Azure AI Foundry, try the different models and see what works for you. If you need fine tuning or you need, uh, you need to add rug or prompt engineering, this is something uh, that you, this is a choice you make based on what you need. So for, example, for instance, in our case, we used fine tuning and this is, we needed to change how the model acts and uh, how the model responds to some user, user queries. And other ways to actually customize the model is using prompt engineering and retrieval augmented generation. And you can combine other strategies. So we will go through this in the next topic and this will be the last topic because this is the most fun part of it though. So, Thank you for this session and uh, please reach out if you have any questions.